Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul and this video we're breaking down Deadbeat Dad the movie starring George Clooney. The Midnight Sky has quite a symbolic ending and a lot to unpack from it and throughout this video we're going to be breaking it all down whilst giving our interpretation of it. Based on the book Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Stolton, it tells the story of a man filled with regret trying to do one last good deed before he slips off this mortal coil. We're going to be going over it all but if this is your first time here then please subscribe to the channel and make sure you click the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video. Come on yeah, it, it is Christmas. Now, now we start off in 2049, three weeks after a cataclysmic event that has completely ruined Earth's atmosphere. Because God cupcaked the planet, those that could escape decided to leave and journey into space in the hopes of finding a new home. Rather than following them though, we stay behind with a terminally ill scientist called Augustine, played by George Clooney. I know I'm not really selling the movie here, but, but trust me it gets better. Look, it's got Santa in it. Now at an arctic base, we see as Augustine tries to reach out to the passengers of the Ether, a ship making a return journey from Jupiter Moon K23, which is capable of housing human life. Ether actually means the air that the ancient Greeks believed was breathed in by the Olympians, and they are very much seen as being above the Earth, looking down on us and living in somewhat of a paradise. There's also many biblical references such as Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark and so on, but we'll get into this more towards the end of the video. Now initially it seems like Augustine is joined by a young mute girl who was left behind by her mother at the start of the movie. Though this could be setting up the plot of the Home Alone reboot, it's actually revealed to be a hallucination and this girl is a stand-in for his true daughter who is aboard the Ether. Depending on how early you guess this twist, probably determines how much you will enjoy the movie and I have to say that the first half hour felt rather dull and slow but things do pick up as we watch the trials and tribulations that both sides of the story go through. At its heart, the midnight sky is about Augustine analysing what he should have focused on in his life, namely his daughter, and it's actually quite sad seeing the character living out his last days wishing he'd done things differently. When Augustine was a younger man, he threw himself into his work at the expense of others and ruined his relationship with his partner and daughter because of his fascination with K23. Augustine unfortunately was someone who spent his entire time trying to get away from those close to him and this is why he focused on the moon instead of making true connections. His goal, the one thing driving him was to journey there, but we know from what we see in the character that it would have been as empty for him as the life he had on earth. He was someone who shut out others and clearly he didn't want a family, possibly because he thought they would either be a distraction or something that would slow him down from his goals. Now this drive is actually something that helps the character make a perilous journey across the Arctic in order to reach a better functioning satellite base and it's clear that, in the end, he wishes to make a connection with someone, he's just lucky enough to make contact with his own daughter. Now there are several characters that are the complete opposite to him and I think Augustine is very well juxtaposed by Mitchell who wants to return to Earth even after learning that it's been completely decimated. Throughout the film we see him as someone who is kept away from his family because of his work and he wants to do nothing more than to get back to them. This is of course a polar opposite to Augustine who viewed his family as something that kept him away from his work and I think the two characters work really well in reflecting each other. Sanchez who too returns to earth discusses with Mitchell about how time is used and how to make one's lifetime mean something. He divulges that his daughter died and also talks about how he dreams that his child and Mitchell's were friends. He wants to use his time to help his buddy, the one person that's been there for him, and shows that we can all find meaning in life and make it count. Now in opposite to this, there's a really heartbreaking scene in which we see August reminiscing over his partner, telling him that she wasn't pregnant. Clearly this was a lie that she told to him because she realised where his priorities lay. Augustine couldn't pull himself away from his work to even answer the phone to speak to her and thus we see that he's willing to let everything go so that he can focus on his obsession. His partner wouldn't even tell their daughter that he was her dad because he knew that he would resent her for it if there were obstacles that got in the way but I have to say I think Augustine actually resents himself more than anything. When watching the film for a second time I found the flashback moments the most heartbreaking and not even George Clooney voice dubbing over the actor's lines put me off these moments. I'm not, I'm not crying. I really showed someone who thought that what he wanted had more value than what he had and he was willing to throw it all away on the off chance that he could get something better. 
On the other hand, Mitchell is willing to go back to certain death just to be with his wife and children because he knows that they are what made his life important and that he wouldn't have anything if they were gone. Augustine, however, wished to spend his last few days dying by himself in the cold, but clearly his subconscious had other plans and thus it created this apparition of his daughter Iris to at least give him some connection. I think this manifestation of her makes him realise that what he truly wants to do is gain a connection to someone, anyone, and thus he sets out on his final mission to reach out to the ether. This is shown by him saying to Iris that he wishes she'd tell him anything about her life and clearly he wants to know if there was any point to his. Now the movie does have a lot of tense moments, namely a sinking trailer in the middle of the Arctic, as well as debris fields that hit the ether when people are outside making repairs. Just a bit of advice here, never say that it's your first and last spacewalk when you're in the middle of it mate, you, you, you're just asking for trouble there. Now these action scenes are great, but I think the film really comes together in the end and it's more about the emotional connections that are made, rather than the sinking feeling that you get whilst watching the action scenes play out. Now in the end, the real Iris tells Augustine about K23 and how incredible it is. He saw himself as someone that just pointed to places whilst others went there and doesn't really feel like there was much value in what he did. However, Iris completely negates this idea when she talks about how amazing what he did in discovering the moon. She says that it's similar to Colorado, which is where the two were both stationed at at one point and talks about the sky being orange as well as the plant life and vegetation. As we know, August was never able to go there, but this conversation allows him and his mind to arrive at the place he longed for the entire time, somewhere that his daughter will soon call home. With the apparition of her, they look over the midnight sky, which now has orange in it, and he stares at Iris, knowing that he did something. The character passes away as we hear the real one narrating her time on the moon, indicating as to what the future will be like. She states that she's never seen something so beautiful, and in some ways, this verifies that all of Augustine's work wasn't for nothing. There was purpose to it, and rather than dying completely with a feeling of regret, he can look back on his life and know that his daughter was able to take something from it. Augustine's goal this entire time was to find a connection with someone, something to show that his work did mean something, and that the sacrifice of his family was worth it in the end. He does find this and through his daughter we can see firsthand that though he has regrets over the way he acted, that it wasn't all for nothing. I think Iris also being open to the idea of naming her child after another flower also suggests that his legacy will carry on through his grandchild. Though he was never there for her in his life, his death and the actions he took in the movie saved hers and we watch as Iris and Adewale travel back to K23. Now this credit scene in which they sit at the control panel brings a lot with it and clearly the pair are going to be the Adam and Eve of their new world. Earth was a paradise at one point but they've been cast out and now must journey to a new home and start out all over again. God or rather natural forces wash the earth clean and with this arc they'll travel to somewhere safe in order to begin again. Might be reaching there but just how I took it. Now the pair stepping away from the control panels is quite somber and there is really two ways that you can take it. You can see it as them living a long life together and restarting the human race, or that they might face the same difficulties that Augustine did. Adewale did seem quite apprehensive over learning that he was having a daughter, and in some ways, I see him as a metaphor for Augustine. Though the pair hold hands in the finale, they're distracted by a notification, and then they both return to their work. Adewale steps away and leaves Iris at the panel with her unborn child, I kind of took this as symbolising that the mistakes of the past will be repeated. They go away using different staircases, and who knows, they may end up being separated. However, that doesn't mean it's for nothing, and humanity will return, though we could always be plagued by the same mistakes that we've been victims of. I think there's a lot to take from it, and though I didn't really find Midnight Sky all that amazing first watch, I think the second viewing really elevated it for me when I had more of an idea of what I was in for. I think a lot of people will take different things from it, and I'd of course love to hear your thoughts and theories on the film below. It's really well acted, and had the pacing been a lot tighter, I think it would be getting more favourable reviews. However, the heart is definitely there, and though I guess the twist in the first 10 minutes, that doesn't mean that the journey wasn't worth taking. The Midnight Sky is something I think people should check out, and make up their own minds on, and it gets a 7 out of 10. 
Now don't forget that on the 30th of December we're giving away 3 copies of the Lord of the Rings 4K box set to our subscribers. All you have to do to be on with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the film. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of Sweet Home on Netflix which will be linked on screen right now. We go over the entire season and it's definitely worth checking out if you watch the Korean horror. With that out of the way, thank you for sitting through the video. If I don't speak to you before Friday, have a Merry Christmas and all the best for the new year. Take care. P -p 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 Peace. Love you.